Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, this is a different kind of Goza. Mezcal Margarita Goza is an 8% bourbon barrel aged Imperial Goza from Ferndale Project in Ferndale, Michigan. For those of you not in the know, not that I'm in the know, but for those of you who are not in the know, if the know can be known, Ferndale Project is operating out of the former Axel Brewing Company space, the Livernoy Tap, and it's now a branch of Eastern Market Brewing Company. I was able to get over there last weekend and pick up a few beers, including a Maybach, a Cerveza, a White Stout, and this Margarita Imperial Goza. I've been really happy with all the beer that I've had from them so far. This will be the first time I'm digging into this one, though. This Margarita Goza is part of a series where they take their base mezcal Imperial Goza and barrel age it in different kinds of barrels. This is the second one of the series. The first one was aged in white wine barrels. This one's aged in bourbon barrels. Now with that being said, let's take a look at the label. We'll get it into a glass. Fun fact, tequila and mezcal are both made from agave, but tequila is made specifically from Blue Weber agave, whereas mezcal is made from over 28 different varieties of agave and traditionally carries a bit more of a smoky characteristic than just regular tequila. So let's take a look at the label here. This one is really, it's got a, a foil kind of label on it, a lot of colors going on. It says Mezcal Margarita Goza across the front, and then it says Bourbon Barrel Aged with the Ferndale Project Bird here on it, and it says Ferndale Project across the bottom, go figure. It also has the address of the Ferndale Project, 567 Livernoy in Ferndale, Michigan, 48220. On the side here, and I've noticed this on all the beers that I've had from, from Ferndale Project so far, it says Imperial Goza style ale aged in former bourbon mezcal barrels with hickory smoked salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, and fresh squeezed lemons and limes. It gives you a description of the beer on one side. On the other side, it says 8% alcohol by volume, one pint. This one's a little bit different from the other ones that I've had. They all will list, if it's not just the generic label, they'll list like the hops used, the malt used, uh, again, the ABV. I just think that's really cool that you can get all those facts right up front. I'm gonna use a special glass today. This is my Eastern Market Brewing Company Ferndale Project Tiku glass. This is a slightly undersized Tiku. It's about 12 ounces. It's available on their website. Most Tikus I think are about um, 14 ounces. This is like right around 12. I didn't look at what the specific stats of this glass were, but it's, a, so if you, if you do buy this, just be aware it's a little bit smaller of a Tiku, tiku than you might be used to. We're gonna go ahead and crack this open and put a nose on the can. Oh, getting a lot of good aromas out of there. A lot of salty kind of characteristic. A bit of a limey characteristic as well. Let's go ahead and pour it. And it's coming out a bit of a yellowish orange uh, out of the can here. Not going to be able to pour it way too much. Again, this is a, a bit of an undersized glass. But it's got a nice amount of head for how small it is. It's about a finger's worth of head. I wasn't able, obviously, to get too aggressive and pour too hard. This is... So the only other kind of Imperial Goza that's kind of in the same style that I can think of is Masagave. I remember Masagave being a lot darker. It does have a similar aroma, but Masagave looks a lot darker than this one. So that's the differences I'm noticing there in the head has pretty much dissipated, but there's a thin layer of bubbles there on the top holding up to the light. It's a bit more of an orange, I think. Like I said, Masagave is the closest thing I can compare it to. Masagave is a bit more of a rusty. This is a lot orangey a lot more orangey than Masagave was. Let's go ahead and put a better nose here on the glass. Yeah, getting a lot of really nice sweet aromas, uh, a lot of limey kind of bite in there as well. I wouldn't wear this as a cologne, but it smells pretty damn good. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Cheers. Wow. The thing I got on the upfront, the reason mind was blown, was a lot of salty characteristic right up front. I love salty characteristic or a nice salty flavor out of a Goza. You don't want it to be too salty because if it's too salty, it overpowers everything. While my mind was blown with all the salty kind of characteristic right up front, it's not, uh, it is not, that's not an overwhelming thing, not an overwhelming flavor in this beer. So let's give it another try. Let me try and slow my roll, see if I can give you a little bit more of a kind of nuanced approach to this. So 
Pretend that didn't happen. Okay, pretend this is, we're going in here fresh, okay? And cheers. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyways, that saltiness is in there. It's right up front. It's the first thing you taste. The mouthfeel, let's get in the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel, I'm so scattered. The mouthfeel is a nice kind of, not super thick, not really heavy, but it is, it's just under like a heavy, I would characterize Masagave, I, I gotta compare this to Masagave because it's really kind of, they're beers that are kind of similar in, in some ways, but very different in others. So this one, uh, it's not quite as thick, it's not quite as syrupy as a Masagave would be. It's, it's a little bit lighter than that, it's very refreshing. The overwhelming thing that I taste in this is it's not as syrupy sweet as a Masagave. So it has like those sweet characteristics to it, but it also has that liminess. The liminess is a little bit more pronounced than the regular Masagave is, and the saltiness is a little bit more pronounced. So you're getting a lot more salt flavor in this. You're getting a lot more of that lime characteristic, but you're getting a little bit less of the, you know, total margarita mix sweetness that you would get out of a masagave it's a little bit more nuanced here it's a little bit more subtle and i think it actually works a little bit better together it's a little bit lower abv as well eight percent i'm not picking up from what i can tell on any kind of boozy characteristic out of it but this is bourbon barrel aged so i think well let me get another taste and i'll let you know yeah so a little bit more salt a little bit more lime i think I am picking up a little bit on a kind of a oaky note to it on the tail end. It has a little bit of a, you know, there's always a debate in my mind how much bourbon barrel aging adds to like a bourbon flavor to the beer. But I feel like there is on the tail end of this, there is a little bit of that kind of molasses sweetness that just kind of as it dries out on your tongue, you get this kind of aftertaste is a lot of salt, a lot of lime, but there's also this underlying sweetness like on the the salt and the lime collect on the back of my tongue, whereas this bourbon kind of sweetness molasses flavor is on the front of my palate, on the front of my tongue. It kind of hangs out under my tongue, like that's where I'm kind of tasting a bit of that. It's got a really great flavor, like this. I feel like if you tried this next to a masagave, you would be able to tell the difference because Masagave, again, it's a little bit heavier mouthfeel, it's a little bit more syrupy, it's a little bit more sickeningly sweet. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say, and the only reason I say it's sickeningly sweet is trying it, you know, thinking of this beer. Because this has sweet notes to it, it has a lot of saltiness, has a lot of lime flavor, but it's not, it's not sick, it's not, it doesn't have like that sickeningly sweet characteristic to it. It's a lot more subtle, a lot more subdued, but a lot more nuanced as, and almost a bit more classy you know it's a little bit more refined it's a little bit less of um you know shorts cut off shorts and t-shirt and this one's maybe a little bit more of seersucker and you know that kind of vibe going on and maybe that's totally not apt at all you know talking about beer but that's kind of how i feel about it so i gotta tell you but yeah and i feel like this one is very dangerous but it's a little less dangerous because it's only eight percent and i feel like um you know, with a smaller glass, I can just kind of drink more. See, now that I'm getting lower in the can, I feel like I'm getting a little bit darker of a color than I was getting on the original, but um, maybe I'll be able to put something side by side to show you, you know, from the first pour to this pour. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I've been really impressed by all the stuff from Ferndale Project so far. I think I'm most impressed by this one. I love the Maybach. I love the Cerveza. I loved the White Stout. I'm not generally like a White Stout kind of guy but I really enjoyed the White Stout because it's not, it wasn't super in your face. It, it added a lot of things that I think other White Stouts that I have haven't been able to do so much of. And I feel that the same way about this. It's a lot more nuanced. I, you know, obviously they can make it in smaller batches than Masagave is made, so they can maybe give a little bit more care to it. But this one, yeah, I will be definitely looking forward to anything in this series that, that Ferndale Project puts out because I would love to see the different variations and different iterations of what they're able to do with this beer. All right, friends, that has been Mezcal Margarita Goza from Ferndale Project in Ferndale, Michigan. Have you been able to get to Ferndale Project yet? They opened like late February, right before all this kind of craziness started. Have you picked up any beer from them? Have you been able to pick up any beer or have delivery from your favorite local brewery? Let us know who they are in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell because I'm here 
talking about beer twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Throw those little, you know, beer briefs in once in a while. And it's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are, and most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, everybody. Cheers.